Empower Radio presents The Farkas Files, an exploration of energy, metaphysics, and the paranormal with David Franklin Farkas. The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere. Here's your host, David Franklin Farkas. Good evening. Thank you one and all for being with us, spending some of your valuable time wherever you are, whenever you are, um, because people listen to us all over at their convenience, which is really so cool. Um, my guest tonight is Corby Mitleib, and she's an old friend. She used to have a show on Empower Radio just before mine, and it's going to be fun to catch up with her and hear more, more about what she's up to. But first, tonight's metaphysical music. And I don't know, is it just me or has the world gotten weirder? Um, today's the full moon, and the full moon usually makes me tired and achy. And instead, I'm energized, which is wonderful, but weird. Tomorrow night, tomorrow is Friday the 13th, which really doesn't mean anything. I mean, that the story of why that's supposed to be uh, a bad day has to do with the Knights Templar hundreds of years ago. But people think that Friday the 13th is um, scary for some reason. And then there's the weather. Um, around here, it was in the 20s and 30s two days ago with very high winds and high wind chills. And the last two days, it's been in the 50s with rain. And tomorrow, we'll go back down to the 30s. So, so that's just a little strange. Of course, our West Coast is also getting horrendous storms that they've never gotten before. Um, and this is all without even talking about the political situation in my country, which is bizarre um so i hope wherever you are that things are less chaotic and less crazy than they are here and um i'm just gonna leave it with that tonight because what can you say when things are that strange and when i say things are strange you know they're probably pretty strange so that's tonight's metaphysical musing and let Let's have some fun with Corby Midlight. Thanks so much for being on the show, Corby. Oh, it's good to be back and talking to you, David. It's been a million years. It has been a million years, and uh, it's so much fun to hang out. Um, and part, part of what I do with every guest, and it'll give the, the folks at home, as they used to say, um, an idea of who you are because they haven't heard you in a while, is uh, I always ask, how did your life unfold? that you are doing the work that you're doing and you know you can tell them what it is that you do oh sure well um i am a uh, full-time psychic medium um six days a week 45 weekends on the road in books and radio obviously and television stuff like that there so how did i get started with the wiki woo is really the question when i was nine i read a book called the witch family by eleanor estes and instead of thinking, uh, ooh, that's scary, or ha, 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 I thought, and your point is, I knew there was magic in the world, and I wanted to go find it. So fast forward <clears throat> to um, 1973, when I was a senior in high school, and that's when Live and Let Die came out with Jane Seymour as Solitaire. So they had the James Bond 007 tarot deck, and I bought it. True story. I mean, we were all hippies then. <laughs> you needed your deck and you needed your elephant bills. But I kept reading for 20 years, really working to keep my ego out of the way. So I'd be the tube, as John Holland says, the clear channel for the information they needed. Uh, then all of a sudden in 1994, I could do hands-on healing and talk to dead people with no training. I often say that is when God said, hello, here's your draft notice. You're working for me. So I hung out my right. shingle and I did it part-time. Uh, uh, meanwhile, doing all kinds of stuff, actress, author, uh, legal assistant, video producer, executive recruiter, stuff. It's a shame you're not talking about No, I just couldn't figure out where my, you know, real truth <laughs> was. And so I just, you know, it's like the smorgasbord. But <clears throat> um, 
9-11, Carl and I were watching the towers burn. Carl's my husband. And I looked at him and, and I said, look, I'm going to have to do that work full time. People need to know there are other answers out there. And he looks at me and he grins and he says, I've been carrying the house since before I met you. I believe in you. Go do it. So within a year, I was just, I took the jump and have never looked back. And that's, um, what, about 15 years now? Amazing. Wow. Even for me, that's amazing. Wow. So It really is amazing. And that's doing psychic work as full-time work. It is. I mean, I, I do several things. I'm a certified professional tarot reader. I'm a certified psychic. Uh, I'm a trained medium. I'm a specialist in past life retrieval. It's what I do for Robert Schwartz in his book series, Your Soul's Plan and Your Soul's Gift. And we're working on volume three. Um, like I say, I'm a medium, but I'm not dial a dead. If Uncle Harold is on a field trip up there, he might not be by the phone. <laughs> I, you know, I love but, the way you what talk you're doing about right this now, well, the thing is, you know, everyone says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I look at them and I say, I want to be uh, a cross between <clears throat> Swami Beyond Ananda, Steve Behrman, and Wayne Dyer. Funny as hell, but normal enough you could borrow my lawnmower. Because when people laugh, and there's a lot of laughter at, at my table, then they lower their shields and the information can get in. They don't panic about it. They just listen and they absorb it. Right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you're a Jersey girl, I'm a Brooklyn boy, and uh, we both do that kind mm -hmm. of thing. We certainly do. Um, <laughs> and frankly, it helps because it keeps my ego in check. The big problems with a lot of psychic is psychic work is people are afraid, what if I'm wrong? Well, I tell them, look, even the best of us are only 85% accurate. The only one 100% accurate is God. And he doesn't have a radio show, and he's not doing a psychic fair this week, so get over <laughs> it. Yeah, we have to talk to him about that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and the other thing is, doing it this way empowers, no, no pun on the name of the radio station, but it really empowers people. Um, if someone comes to to me and says, is my business going to be successful? I will look at them and say, and what if I say, no, it's going to be awful. You're going to go bankrupt and live in a box under a bridge. That's not what you want to ask. You want to ask, how do I make it rock? And then I have a multi-level card spread that shows them all the abilities and possibilities that they've got. Because right. it's a very short step from the psychic said it's going to fail and therefore allowing it to fail to well, I see terrible things for your business, but I have this magic candle that's only $600. You burn right. that, and I promise you, it's wonderful. You know, that's, again, the Madam Hoo-Ha and Swami Swalanda stuff that gets people in trouble and gives the rest of us a bad name. So if I can right. train people not to look for that kind of thing, then we're good. Yeah, I, I got into a strange thing. I work very differently than you do. It's all remote, and most of my work is clearing, so I'm not doing readings. Mm -hmm. But I get information, and I used to have a laundry list of what I found, and people love that. They love getting the list of, you know, I found this many ghosts and this many whatever. Um, and then I realized that what they did was they focused on the scariest thing. Oh, my God, there was, you know, whatever it was. And they energize it, and they bring it back. I was like, oh, this is just, I know they love that and it's a selling point and, you know, it's cool that I can do it, but no, I'm not going to give people that information anymore. So no, it's like, don't say, think about pink elephants. Right, right. Don't, don't think about what your kitchen looks like. Um, yeah. You know, so now basically what I say is don't worry about it. There was stuff. I found it. I took care of it. That's my job. Now you enjoy the fact that it's not there. <laughs> uh, w one of my dear friends, Richard Peeney, once gave me a brilliant quote, which was, sometimes knowing why is the booby prize. Oh, and I it sounds time. like knowing what <laughs> is the booby prize for you. Right, right. Well, knowing why is always the booby prize. But yeah, people would focus on 
whatever set them off. And then they pull it back in, which is what they had done in the first place. That's why it was there. Um, yeah. So it would, it would, I was surprised how long it took me to figure that out. Look, uh, eventually Dawn does break over Marblehead, so, you know, it would be there. <laughs> Marblehead, huh? Okay. <laughs> so what's going on now? What's What are you up to? What am I up to? Well, um, everyone has said for years, you should be writing a book, and it's like, shut up. Uh, what do I have to say that's different from everybody else? But last year, I decided to write a weekly blog on Facebook, and I chose a theme per month. And about halfway through the year, I realized there are the three books. And so the first one is coming out January 31st. Okay. It is the first of what I'm calling the self-development project. And the title is Clean Out Your Life Closet. Uh, it's got... Four parts, <clears throat> clarity, um, simplicity, living well with less, adaptability, going with the flow, and stress, because stress is something you simply cannot avoid in the 21st century. So you might as well learn what's good stress, what's bad stress, stress as mission creep, stress as the shot across the bow. And, you know, the last chapter is um, stress the donkey in the hole in the ground. What do you do when you just can't avoid it? So. And some um, of us know that story. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> For those who don't, very quickly, there was an old blind donkey, and he fell in a well. And the farmer said, ah, he's no good to me anyway. Let's just bury him. So he calls all the farmhands, and they're all throwing dirt in the well. And the donkey is crying and praying, and all of a sudden it stops. And the farmer says, great, it's dead. Let's just finish. And as they're putting the last um, shovel of dirt, up climbs the donkey because the donkey finally realized they're throwing dirt. But if I just step on the dirt, they're giving me a way out. Right. So sometimes you just have to take the crud and step on it. And it's the way out of the stress period, end of statement. <laughs> and so I teach people about that. Um, things like perf uh, perfect is the enemy of good. Find happiness and with what you've got right now. And a lot of these sound, you know, uh, not spirituality, but newage as rhymes with sewage. But the key is <laughs> it's not unicorns, farting rainbows and flowers. It's not, it's this, this is all the stupid stuff that I did and you don't have to do it now. Cause you can learn. See, this is how I figured it out. But the other thing is how how many books do we have on our shelves? Because all of us go into the new age health self-help section and we're looking at the books and they've got gorgeous uh, covers and they've got sexy titles. And so we pick it up and we read and a couple of things may catch our eye. And so we say, eh, maybe this is the one that'll work. And so you buy it and you bring it home. But it really, you never read it because it really wasn't doing what you needed. And frankly, me too. From the books in the 1970s that promised to make me a thin, sexy, and dateable teenager to the recent ones that promised to make me thin, sexy, and happily married post-menopause, not to mention compassionate, worldly-wise, activist, mindful, abundant, fearless, and happy in 350 pages or less. Please. So what yeah, I that's, did... That's exactly right. When I... Yeah, I decided, okay, this, this book has to be written by the reader, not just me. So what happens is after each chapter, there's something called the adventure pages. And the adventure pages are where you go to take a look at how you read the book. There are some questions for the reader to reflect on what they read. They come up with places in their life where these ideas will work. They get to decide what their personal takeaways are. We call that putting arrows in your quiver. And then there's a page where they write those three things down and they draw something or collage it or whatever. So it's kind of like their own personal divination card. By the end of the book, you've had 16 chapters. You have 16 of these divination cards. Cards, and you've answered the questions, and that 
book is absolutely yours because your answers are only yours. And no matter who else you give it to, they will not read the book the same way. They won't come up with the same stuff. Right. So anyone who says, oh, I can't do this. They don't start out with the same stuff and they certainly won't wind up with the same stuff. That's right. And that way you are prevented from being a victim by reading it. Oh, I can't do what the person in the book says. So I'm not. No, I'm sorry. There are no victims. There are only volunteers. So don't volunteer to be a victim. Read the book. Come up with your answers and realize they are right. You cannot get it wrong. You're like, you cannot get your life wrong. Robert Schwartz was dealing with that with your soul's plan and your soul's gift for so long because of the whole thing about karma is not carrot and stick. Karma is your life challenges and karma is five things. You've got unbalanced energy, which is a neutral. You've got service, healing, contrast. You want to learn about abundance. You have to be both rich and poor and healing of beliefs. And no matter how long it takes you to learn what your karmic challenge is, you're going to find a way to learn it in this lifetime. You will graduate. You just have to decide gut courses or double major plus lab. Again, you can't get, get it wrong. I wish people would. That should be the, the thing on everybody's tombstone. I didn't get it wrong. You, you pushed my soapbox button. Uh, sorry about that, David. No, no, no. I- I, I have such a good time just listening to you. I'm just sitting here chuckling. It's, uh, the, the way you explain things is so much fun. Well, I, I have explained for so long. <clears throat> I know that some of the stories really work, and some of them are like, yeah, let's tear that one up, try something else. <laughs> so, but it's, you know, you know, it, it's the same thing about people who say, oh, do you think maybe I'm psychic? Hell yes. <laughs> y'all can do what I do. Y'all can do what David does. It's a matter of making sure your circuit breaker lets the power flow. It's not on locked and rusted shut. Because we all have the same wire. Right. But that's also why we're all, you know, we most of us are specialists at something. Uh, I highly admire what you do, David. There ain't no way that I could do the ley lines and see those demons and figure out how to clear the life, uh, clean out your life closet is not about that. Right. Um, but with me, you know, it's always been the past lives. That's always been my special. And, um, let's talk more about past lives after, after the break. And I also want to hear your take on what is going on in the world and in our country. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So what's coming up for you? Do you have well, event, events what's... or, or oh, workshops and things? Lord, yes, 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 everybody. Oh, my God, it's January. What's going to happen for the year? So I tend to be on the road a fair amount. If you go to my website, CorbyMitlide.com, you'll see a page that says, Where's Corby? And you'll see where I'm doing book signings. There's a page that shows you where I am on the psychic uh, show circuit, and I I am on here here on the uh, East Coast. I tend to do New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New England, and some in Ontario. Um, mm-hmm. And for the rest so of you, it, are you wearing a striped shirt and a funny yeah. hat on that page? Um, on, no. on the where's Corby page? No. no. Oh. No, I'm, I'm, you see me standing up there imagining, and I have a little balloon that has uh, suitcases and a globe and all of that kind of happy hoorah. Um, but no, I'm so sorry. I, I, my name does not mean Waldo in Swahili, so there you go. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I always thought I should have one that says, where's Waldo? No. <laughs> Not unless there's a particular demon family that you know that's named Walter. Oh, well. Just a thought. So, so all of that information is on the website where, where you're going to be, what you're up to, and right. all that stuff. Because I know no one can track you down. It's, I'm surprised we got, got you on to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Your, your nose is growing, Pinocchio, so cut it out. Um, 
Seriously, CorbyMidlide.com has like about 150 blogs and all the stuff I do and where to find me. And that's also where people on the first page, you scroll down a bit, you'll see Clean Out Your Life Closet. And there's a place where you can actually download the first chapter free. And that'll get you into the Self-Development Insider. You'll get to know about the launch party on uh, January 31st. We're doing some special contests and giveaways for just people who are signing up and you get to be in on the fun and you know that's not bad always good to be an insider Mm -hmm. i'm with the band (laughs) uh doing i'll tell you doing an online book launch is fascinating uh i massive massive kudos to bernie's young uh she's my editor and a fabulous one. You know, it's so hard when you're a writer to find an editor that will hone what you're saying, make it clear, make it luminescent, and yet doesn't change your voice. And Bernie does it. Um, Anybody out there, you want an editor for your book, I am telling you, B-E-R-N-I-X-I-O-N-G, BernieJung.com. She is your girl. (laughs) Period. End of statement on that one. Um, but we'll be having uh, some of our reviewers on to talk. We'll be answering questions from the audience. I'll be talking, maybe reading a little bit from the book. And um, it's three hours of fun. And, oh, my God, it's really happening. You know, that's that's where it is. <laughs> and after that, it's doing the usual schlep with a bunch of books to a bookstore, standing there or sitting there and smiling. And, you know, to Aloysius, <laughs> have a nice life. Or whatever it takes, but it's a totally different world from doing psychic fairs. But it's what I love. My dream is I enjoy doing readings for people, but I would much rather stand up somewhere for two hours, have them laugh hysterically, and leave there changed. That's my that's my Santa. This is my big present. This is what I want. So well, that's the next thing. That's what I'm working on. And 2017 is a one-year numerologically. Last year was our year for the big dump, the big goodbye. And this is the year Mm -hmm. when you have to plant the seed for the next nine years. Whatever you want the universe to bring you, you got to do something concrete and then go, yo, down here, pay attention. (laughs) Good to know. Well, we're going to be going to the break. We're going to be going to the break. Um, We'll be back shortly, unless, of course, we get taller. My guest tonight is Corby Mitleid, my dear friend, who used to be my colleague here at Empower Radio. And uh, we will be back. Don't go nowhere. It's a lot more fun that's going to happen. And I have lots of questions for Corby. So don't go nowhere. Back to the Farkas Files with David Franklin Farkas on Empower Radio. And we're back with Corby Yes, Midline. we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Now with Corby Midline. And when, when last seen, we were talking about past lives. Because I'm curious about your take on what a past life is and how they affect present lives and what is the present and all of that. Okay. <laughs> all right. I am not the definitive answer, that, but I can certainly tell you what we've learned. Um, for one thing, I am a 
past life retrieval specialist, not a past life regressionist. And people really do need to know the difference in that. Someone who is a past life regressionist is the person who takes you down into hypnosis, deep trance, and you go wandering in the stacks of the Akashic Record, and you go flipping through and you find some of your own lives. Now, I'm a little different because as a retrieval specialist, you tell me things like, why is it that my background is Scotch-Irish, but I'm so drawn to Peru or something, or why am I afraid of refrigerators? I mean, you know, it can be anything. <laughs> and I'm the one who's got the library card. I go up to the Akashic Records and I grab a book and I bring it down and I say, read chapter two. Uh, an example that I use for, for simple is Rob and I, several years ago, were doing a yeah, talk at Lilydale, the spiritualist community in New York's very famous mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was doing what I call lightning round readings for this and a woman raises her hand and she says I've always been terrified of wet hair in my face it's ridiculous and her hair was butch short so she said what's this from it can't be from now and I quickly go upstairs and I look at her and I say five syllable answer Lusitania you were on the ship in 1915 when it was torpedoed by the Germans, you went down with it. Um, you were not at the style that they had in 1915. You had much more, if you will, Edwardian hair. It, these days I could go think Lady Mary Crawley on Downton Abbey, but it wasn't playing then. Yeah. The thing is, because your hair was so long and thick, it took on more water. It was much heavier. Plus, Debris kept getting caught in it, and it pulled you down, and you drowned. And she looks at me white-faced, and she said, is that why I'm also afraid of boats? And I said, very probably. Now, mm -hmm. when a good past-life retrieval person will give you those details. And um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is an example of how spirit – chooses what your specialty is going to be. It uses what you're good at. Now, for instance, my I have a theater background and I love history and I'm a good storyteller. So past lives are good for me. Whereas somebody else might say, well, you're in a long dress and a big hat, so it's old fashioned. I'm going to go, mm, hobble skirt, picture hat, that kind of ostrich feather. I think we're talking 1911 or 1912. Which one's going to give you more information? On the other hand, um, I speak English and a little bit of German. I'm not a language person. My dear friend, Tommy Lee, cheerfully refers to him himself as a language slut. He's never met one he doesn't like. He speaks nine of them. So if he, you want to speak to your grandmother in Dutch because she was Dutch, he's your channel, not me. Again, spirit will use whatever talents we've got. So a past life can help you understand what you're dealing with this time. But you don't just keep going asking because you want to be amused and watch the movie. You're here to live this life. Right. And I don't want to tell you how many times I have run across people who have said things like, oh, I must have been Anne Boleyn. I can't wear turtlenecks. <laughs> Wrong answer. I'm real sorry. But so, we've all been we've all been saints. We've all been sinners. Could be that you were somebody famous, but it won't necessarily come up. Right. Right. Well, for those that may not be familiar with the records, um, explain your understanding of what the Akashic records are. All right. Time is a web, not a line, but our little pea brains can't really grasp that awfully. Your Akashic records, it, literally the records of every life you have ever lived and in a sense or will live. We generally don't look at what's quote unquote future, but people will want to look at the past because we think of time as linear. <clears throat> so the Akashic is your storybook. And when you have a question, I go up and I look in the 
Kashuk Library to see if one of your stories will help you make sense of what you're going through now. So is that the way you experience it? Do you see a library and find the book? Uh, no, actually, I just open up and I get a download. I see it like a movie. So right. it's one of the reasons I can describe things in nuance. I hear the voices. I hear the inflections. I see where it's happening. Um, there was another woman who uh, had some questions about the Underground Railroad connection. And I literally saw her. She was white. She was in a small whitewash shack holding the hand of a very elderly black woman woman who was dying and I said and the dress is gray and it looks like that she had been having that dream for years and mm -hmm. didn't know what it was right down to where it was who was holding her hand and what she was wearing so clearly that is something that we're both getting from the Akashic she needed to know right. it right well I'm always fascinated with how anyone who does this kind of work gets the information because everybody gets it differently so that's that's very cool very cool so i learned a lot you know, if i go ahead. move ahead and move over and let the download happen it's much better than if i desperately try to figure things out right. it's like hands-on healers if i'm trying to heal you i will be a crispy critter in short order if i say i'm just the tube it all flows i don't do a thing but you feel better right right so, since you get information from all over about all kinds of things, do you have any take on what in the world is going on right now? In the world, in our country, what's this craziness? Well, part of it is um, we need to deal with Trump. We needed a massive wake-up call. We weren't listening. Um, so it is Trump is not the devil incarnate. Trump is the big, fat, wet herring in the face like the Monty Python bit. You can't ignore it anymore. Um, will America fall? Uh, no, it'll change. But it needs to change. All of the racist and bigoted and et cetera, et cetera, that is has risen to the top since his election. Well, just because you can't see the maggots because that's where the stone is doesn't mean they're not there. We lifted up the stone and now we see the maggots. And so if you want to clear it out, you do it. You take an active role. Um, I don't think he's going to be in office very long. That's, that's being pretty clear. Um, it'll probably be Pence. Whether we can get a Democrat in in 2020 or somebody different, I don't know. But the key is, if you don't want to go down the 1984 rabbit hole, guys, get involved. That's the rule. Well, that was kind of what I thought was going to happen as well. But uh, Pence mm -hmm. scares me <laughs> in a different way, so. Um, oh, Pence, Pence is also a monster, but we are less likely to get in a nuclear war with Pence. Pence will destroy right, women's right. rights. Pence, Pence will destroy, you know, but we can rebuild that. We can't rebuild if we're all cinders. Right. Right. Trump really has no clue when it comes to international yeah, stuff or war or nukes or any of that. I, He's shown that already. I, I think my favorite... My favorite word for that comes from my husband's curator. He is acluistic. It means without a <laughs> All righty then, that says it all. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and you may use the word, David, no problem. Um, <clears throat> so what about... Uh, we're supposed to see love and light. There's a very interesting uh, article that's running around on Facebook today that he there's this one person who is not even thinking about Trump um, because the idea that you, what you get is what you concentrate on. And that's wonderful. But the fact is, sometimes you got to do the work. 
every single light worker who says, oh, oh, but I'm praying about this and holding into the light. That's enough. I'm sorry. It's not enough. Right. Um, I joined the Interfaith Alliance and the ACLU. If I see someone hassling a black or a Muslim walking down the street, yeah, it's very nice to pray love and light over them. But, you know, go walk next to them. Go engage them in conversation. Go say, I am with you. You have to do an action. Prayer does not lift a spoon to feed a hungry child. Your hand does. Right. So the old, my favorite saying, old German saying, um, begin to weave and God God will give the thread. Show them what you Mm -hmm. want. You'll get the message. Right. Right. Yeah, the uh, white light and bunnies as you know, is not the way I work and not my understanding of the universe. Not Um, at all. There are, there are intelligences in the universe that want to do us harm that intend harm that create all of the, um, pain and slavery and craziness that affects so many people where a few people can inflict a tremendous amount of pain on a lot of people and you got to get in its face you know unfortunately i'm from brooklyn so um i understand that but this idea that you can uh, just call in the white light and no actually you have to call in a whole lot more than that um and the resources are there the thing is the brightest candle is going to cast a shadow. Yeah, the shadow's there. You have to work with it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, yeah, I agree with that. Um, <clears throat> but if you're scared about it, that doesn't work. You have to simply see it as, all right, that's schmutz on the window and I'm rolling up my sleeve and I'm screwing it. And I may have to use steel, wool, and ammonia, but I'm going to get rid of the schmutz. Right. Right. Well, fear is what is used to control people. That's the primary tool. So anytime, anytime you find yourself being fearful of something and you realize that somebody else is doing it to you, you know, and, they'll, and they're very direct. Be afraid. Be very afraid. You know, whatever the... Mm-hmm. fear du jour is and you know my response to that is always no get out of my face you're lying and they're lying because they're telling you to be afraid as soon as they say to be afraid you know they're lying um but yeah pushing back is what needs to be done and telling the truth in the face of the lies the gaslighting the attempt to Stockholm syndrome, the entire country. Um, Yes. Yeah. His news conference, it was amazing. He was gaslighting in the, in the news conference. Yeah. No, this isn't what's going on. This is going on. So what do you do with that? How, this is something I'm going to ask you. If someone watches that, what is the fastest way they can turn that off in their brain? Well, the the thing that's going on with all of this is that it's activating every fear that people are carrying around with them. So then it's not just whatever it is that they're gaming you with. It's that they've managed to light up all your stuff. And so working on your stuff and using clearing methods that are fast and effective, and I have you know, my, my list of three or four that I love. Um, but finding a way that you can clear out not just the thoughts, not just paper over them, but that you can clear out the energy of that and the stuff that goes on in your nervous system so that you can be clear again and mm-hmm. you can decide how you want the world to be. And, you know, they'll do it again and it'll hit you again and, you have to clean it up again. So I use uh, 
Ho'oponopono a whole lot, um, which is the Hawaiian healing method, which is about making things right, about cleaning your yourself up so that the world changes because you've changed. Uh, the Sedona method is very simple and effective for letting go of things. Um, yes. Tap this acupressure technique. Um, yes. Is also another one that's very easy and find the website and there's a set of basic instructions on how to do that method. Um, what are some of your favorites? For getting rid of fear? Mm -hmm. Always ask yourself three questions. What am I afraid of? Why am I afraid of that? What do I think would happen if I stopped being afraid of it? We mm -hmm. never get to that third question, David. That's the right. problem. Um, yeah, that's uh, the, the gist of something called the option process that I was taught by Barry and Samaria Kaufman at the Option Institute in Massachusetts 30-odd years ago. And... It helps. We there's a difference between reacting and responding. Yeah. If we react, you hit me, I hit you. Respond is you hit me, I decide what my actions will be. It's thought. It's not just knee jerk. It's not you know the lizard brain. Right. When you ask yourself these questions, you can get there. What am I afraid of? Um, I'm afraid my health care is going to be taken away. Why are you afraid of that? Because of what the Republicans are doing. What if you stopped being afraid of that? Well, I'd probably have the wherewithal to see what I could do to stop it. Again, fear paralyzes. And that's what the GOP is hoping for. Right. It's one of the reasons that Trump was going to have all of his um, cabinet picks on, on the same day, plus his... Uh, gaslighting news conference plus uh, what did happen, which was the GOP held a session at 1.30 in the morning, basically destroying right. Obamacare and all the promises that Trump made. They said, oh, screw that. We're not keeping any of the good stuff because what right. the GOP yeah, wants that. is to destroy you know, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. And so if you're just afraid they're going to do that, you're paralyzed. If you decide, I'm not going to be afraid, I'm going to fight it, then you can take action. That's the big thing. Absolutely. We probably should um, define gaslighting for people that have never heard the term before. Um, gaslighting is when something is going on and you tell an alternative story and hold, hold that story to be the truth, even though the person who's experiencing what their life is um, is having a different experience. Um, and it's used a lot by narcissists to control their partners, um, but it's also used mm. as part of propaganda and mind control, um, just making yes. people crazy by creating another storyline, which is not their experience, but you say it with such authority and so frequently that they start to believe that they... It must be true. And it comes, That's from, right. comes from a play called Gaslight where they uh, demonstrated a relationship like that. Um, right. And 1944, great movie. Um, I, isn't um, Bergman in that as well? It's a I classic. So. Charles a classic, Boyer, yeah. Ingrid Bergman. Go watch it. It's magnificent. But you know, we're watching it happen on a daily basis at this point with Trump. Um, no, your fake news. I'm going to take a this other group, which is his guy. Mm -hmm. It's the only Breitbart. one that I'm going to listen to. Yeah, yeah, right boy. Um, that was the most obvious thing that he did in that press conference. Um, one of the, one of the things people need to remember because this also ratchets down the fear, he is a minority president. Right. Only half the eligible people voted in the United States, and of those, over half voted for Hillary. So about 20% of the United States voted for him. The other 80% are not storm Trumpers, guys. You have allies. Stop being afraid. Go find it. Go do it. 
that's how you stop people like this. Just as you stand up to the demons like David, you stand up to this particular toupee demon and say, this will not stand. Right. Right. We live in interesting times, which supposedly is a Chinese curse. And you live in interesting times. But what I'm going to remind people is we all volunteered to be here. In your pre-birth planning session, you saw this was a possible option. And you said, I want to come down anyway. There are things that I can learn from being alive in this situation. You're a volunteer. You are not a victim. So start acting like a volunteer and choose how you will react. Um, you know, I can, I can go right to my own cancer dance. Uh, I've done the breast cancer dance three times, 2004, Yikes. year and a half after I got married. They said, all right, well, we're taking them, taking your ovaries. We're going to take you from a Dolly Parton figure to a fire plug, and you have no, nothing you can do about it. We're doing it. You have no choice. So, yeah, I freaked for about 24 hours, but then I said, all right, I have to find reasons to be okay with this. I don't care how stupid they sound. And so the first one was, well, you don't have them. You can't get cancer there. The second one was, well, they're not going to get slammed at the refrigerator door at the doctor's every year. And every woman knows exactly what the hell I'm talking about with that. And three, yeah. implants, cool. I'll be perky till I'm 93. I can live with this. Now, this was in 2004. It's 2017. 13 years later, I'm here. I'm healthy. I'm, you know, life is good. But right. had I stayed fearful, then my immune system would have been depressed. Who knows if? If I would have had a recurrence. But the fact that I right. said, been there, done that next, I'm sure has contributed to my longevity. Absolutely. And I, I have several friends who basically said no to the doctor when the doctor gave them the death sentence. Like, you know, you don't have any solutions. That doesn't mean that your view of this is right. You're fired. I'll find somebody else. Um, exactly. Taking... taking control of the situation and deciding there must be a solution there always is a solution so yes well i always have so much fun with you why don't we do this more <laughs> I, we keep saying that and yes we must we really must find the time to do this have your person have, call my person will do radio you know that's how they yeah do it. something like that and the, and the person mm -hmm. is the same guy that we both know. Uh, <laughs> yes. So my guest tonight is Corby Mitleid. And what's the name of the new book? Clean Out Your Life Closet. Clean Out Your Life Closet. And you can find the information at cleanoutyourlifecloset.com. And, and mm -hmm. CorbyMitleid.com. Probably should spell Mitleid. M. I T L E I D. It's German. Yeah. Word means compassion, and it reminds me why I do the work. Absolutely. So, uh, again, Corby, thanks so much. This was so much fun. I'm glad we got to tell people about the book, but the conversation was wonderful. Thank you so much. Always mutual, my friend. <laughs> and if you guys out there got curious about who is this guy David and what in the world does he do? You can find out more at househealing.com. There's every conceivable way of getting in touch with me, including uh, a link to schedule a 20 minute free phone conversation so we can do an assessment of what's going on with a person, place, situation, business, whatever it happens to be and see how my work might be um, useful to you. If you want more about the show, go to thefarkasfiles.com. A whole archive is there, and uh, you can listen directly from the archive, but you can also now get the Empower Radio app and get access to the archives for all of the shows, and there are shows 24-7. So um, there is a ton of wonderful stuff that you could be plugging into and listening to. To at your convenience. And we're also on every streaming media outlet there is iHeartRadio, TuneIn, um, Stitcher. Uh, uh, I'm sure there are two or three others. 
So if you just search in your favorite streaming, um, your favorite streaming access point and you'll find you can find the empower radio or you can find the farkas files and tune in at your convenience which is pretty amazing we've been doing this now for almost six years and that wasn't available when we started so you've got all kinds of options that weren't there before so thank you so much for hanging out with us because that's why we do this is uh to spend some time with you and share some thoughts and ideas and hope that it might be useful to you. Um, so until next week, this is David Franklin Farkas for The Farkas Files. The truth is in here somewhere on Empower Radio. Have a fantastic week. Thank you.